Greetings, Benjamin J from Ben's Trains with another in the series. Well, beginning to uh, do the conversion on this Commodore Vanderbilt. This is that wind-up conversion. So all you have to do is uh, scrape all the paint away on the inside around the winding hole and around the slot for the brake. You don't have to do anything at all on the outside. You can see where the original or what color the original paint was. So that's probably the first time that's been off of there since this left the factory. So I've got all the finials pulled off, lights out, motors out, wiped off all the uh, scrapings on the inside. So now we're going to fill that slot in and to do that we are using epoxy putty. This is some really basic stuff. It's really cheap. You can find this at uh, Home Depot or Menards. And what it is, it has a uh, epoxy resin in the center with a hardener or the catalyst wrapped around it. So this is the end of it, so I'll probably just go ahead and use this. So I don't need all of it, but just to show you how to use this stuff. So all you do is take it out of the package, it's soft and pliable, and you just start squeezing this stuff together. Now when this cures, this can be drilled, tapped, sanded, I mean this stuff gets hard. I mean it gets hard as a proverbial rock. And here's a piece of the hardened putty. I mean this thing is hard. I don't know if you can tell. This stuff is hard. Like I said, you can drill it, you can tap it, and do a lot with it. You can make things out of it. You could actually mold this if you wanted to. But I use it very basically like Bondo. So when it turns a universal gray color, it's ready to use. This stuff is really sticky, really, really sticky, which is good because it sticks to everything. And you notice how I scratched this. I wasn't very delicate. I wanted to actually score the metal. That way it gives this putty something to hold on to. So we get this stuff mixed up. It gets warm. And like I said, it gets really sticky. And it leaves this film on your fingers. Now this stuff is not water soluble. So I take it off with naphtha. Or uh, charcoal lighter fluid, kerosene, anything like that. Okay, so this is about ready to use. So now all we do is we take off a piece of this putty. Bigger, of course, than the hole we're trying to fill. And just roll this stuff out, just like that. Put it in position and just mash it down so it squirts out through the slot in the top of the engine. And you just lay this stuff out and let it follow the contour of the inside of the shell. Just like that. See it sticks up on the outside? So support it on the inside and just squeeze this stuff down just like that. And you want to get this as thin as you can because it's actually a lot of work to sand this down. I tried using a file at first. I actually began using a small wood rasp just to speed the process up. Dremel tool would work really well. And then to spread this out I just lick my thumb. Alright. That is about it. Make sure you don't have an indentation or it'll be below flush when you go to sand it down. You want it raised up enough so you know that slot is filled. Just like that. It's ugly and it's crude, but when this hardens, you just basically sand this all away and it leaves a nice finished edge and you really cannot see this if you take your time and do it right. Okay, good enough. So it's the same thing for the hole for the winding key. So we just take a chunk of this putty. It looks like I'm going to use most of it anyway. Okay, so we take a chunk of this putty. Now you got lots of time to work with this. It takes about, uh, oh I don't know, two hours before it really starts to set. It has to set overnight. 
So it'll do exactly the same thing. Now a lot of this is going to go squirting straight through that hole. So push it down. And you will see this on the inside, but who cares? And just put it in position. And you want a lot of surface area for it to stick to. That way you know it will stay stuck. You could pry this off when it's finished, I suppose. But I try to give it a lot of surface to stick to besides what I just scraped. Like I said, it isn't very pretty on the inside, but it works reasonably well doing this. So now pinch it between your fingers. And just fill that hole up. Like I said, you want to make sure that it's higher than the surface, so push it up from the inside. And then just kind of feather the edges out. And that is basically it. You just let this stuff cure. You can take some of this off. Uh, you just let this cure and uh, it'll take overnight but by tomorrow this is going to be absolutely rock solid I mean this stuff hardens like steel and just the fact you can drill it and tap it without breaking it tells you that it's pretty hard stuff pretty dense so it doesn't have to be pretty all it has to be is above the surface and then like I said we let it set tomorrow we'll take a file File this off, sand it down nice and flush, primer it, paint it, and you've filled the holes in the body. It's really simple to do this. Like I said, just kind of feather this out around the edges up here. Because none of this is going to remain stuck to the outside. That's why you don't have to scrape it on the outside. All this gets ground away. So all of the holding power is on the inside of the engine. You just want to make sure this stuff is nice and thin so it doesn't interfere with anything on the motor. And because it has so much surface area, it's never going to come off of there unless you, of course, wanted to take it off. And uh, it doesn't have to be pretty on the outside, like I said. All, it's gotta, all you got to do is make sure that the putty is above the surface so when you grind this or uh, sand it flush, uh, there's uh, no cavity. It just uh, comes out flush with the rest of the body. All right, that's good enough. So now all you got to do is wait for this to cure. Like I said, about two hours, it'll be virtually immobile. And by tomorrow, this stuff will be just absolutely hard as a rock. And uh, this is the putty. It's really simple to use it. And you'll find it at uh, you know, Home Depot... Uh, Walmart may have it and it's with all the other epoxies and it just comes in a plastic tube it works quite well I've uh, used it for all kinds of things you can make things out of it you can mold it you can do a lot of stuff with epoxy putty and whatever shape you put it in and let it cure it's going to have that shape forever I mean this stuff gets hard so I just want to do a quick video to show the process so tomorrow I'll start filing this down. If there's anything you have to fill afterwards, if there's anything that's uh, below flush or just doesn't look good, you can just fill it in with some standard five-minute epoxy uh, for doing little spot places. Sand it down flush after it cures. Then we spray it with primer. Then we paint it. The finials, I uh, just stick them down to a piece of cardboard, clean them up, clean them in alcohol, and then just spray paint them. So depending on what color this is going to come out to be, like I said, I'm thinking of making it white. Uh, in that case, these will probably be black. But we shall see. So I just wanted to show the quick process of converting these. It's really easy. It's really simple to do this. It's really inexpensive. And in just a few hours, you can go from a really battered up old wreck of an engine to a really nice custom Commodore Vanderbilt uh, of the color of your choosing. White, black, red, yellow, purple, anything you want. And uh, if you want to spend a lot of time doing this, you can come up with some really, really neat designs. 
Uh, for me, like I said, I use the two foot rule. From two feet away, this thing's gonna look really nice. So tomorrow, uh, after this cures, grind it off, sand it down, file it flush, make it look uh, as best you can on the outside so it doesn't show, spray some primer on it, let it set, and then repaint it the color of your choice. Repaint your finials, put them back on, instant custom Commodore Van <coughs> Vanderbilt uh, for less than $20. So I just wanna do a quick video. It's really simple to do this. If you have any questions, feel free to drop me an email. Benstrains at gmail.com. And as always, thank you for watching.